This is ABC 15 Mornings. The need to fix the system. What facilities and where are the facilities going to be to house this increased number of migrants? Senator Mark Kelly speaks about his concerns over Title 42. Sending more military help. With respect to what's going on in eastern Ukraine, that's what's really driving this. New details on the war in Ukraine. Cheating on your tax return. Eventually the IRS typically catches up to us, so you just don't want to risk it because it's not worth it. Why you should never trim down what you Tesla, SpaceX, and now Twitter? Elon Musk wants to buy the social media platform. A lot of talk about that and a lot of talk about what's going on with our Phoenix Suns, which we will get to here momentarily. First, say good morning to you on a Thursday as we ease you into a holiday weekend. I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. And I'm Megan Thompson in for Nick Saletti this morning. Love to be hanging out with you here love this morning here. on a Thursday. Yes. And yes, all I can think about is the Phoenix Suns going into this weekend. But we also want to talk about that most accurate forecast. We have an Easter weekend. We have a warm up on the way. Iris, you're tracking it all for us in that most accurate forecast. Absolutely. You know, Easter is a time when a lot of families get outside, right? Enjoying yes. the weather, maybe doing some Easter egg hunts. You may need to schedule those a little earlier in the day as that will be the cooler point in the day this weekend with temperatures climbing back into the 90s. We'll talk more about that in just a bit, but today we're going to start that warm up. We're waking up to temperatures, though, that are very similar to where we started yesterday. We're talking 50s in much of the valley with 40s out there, too. Officially at Phoenix Sky Harbor, it's 55 degrees. We may drop down a little further before we start to warm, but then we're warming a little faster today. That's going to put us in the upper 60s by 10 a.m. By lunchtime, we're at 76. That was yesterday's high, so today we're warming into those mid-70s by as early as noon and then we'll keep warming. We'll top out at 84 degrees, but that 84 actually puts us right at the average high for this time of year. If you're going to be getting outside, our burn time still 15 minutes, air quality in the moderate range and pollen counts remaining in the medium to high range today. We'll talk about how high those temperatures climb through the holiday weekend in that full seven day in just minutes. Megan, though, giving us an update on that morning drive. Hey, Megan. Hey, good morning. Yeah, and a good update for you. If you were with us in our five o'clock hour, we did have that pursuit involving DPS on the I 10 and 91st Avenue overpass that has now cleared. So you shouldn't have any issues getting on and off the freeway at 91st Avenue. Here's what it's looking like as you travel on the eastbound lanes of the 10 itself, making your way from the West Valley, the 303 to the mini stack, checking in with a drive time right now of 26 minutes, a little bit of slowing on the 17 southbound as you're making your way toward the stack. Pretty typical for this time of the morning, and we do have a crash just west of the 17. It's Indian School Road and 43rd Avenue for you at this point of the morning. We also have the SR 79. It's closed in both directions at milepost 143. This is south of the US 60. Keep this in mind as this is due to a crash. We'll let you know when we hear anything about when it might reopen and we'll get you a check of those desert drive times in just a few minutes. Kaylee. Well, this morning, Glendale police, they're working to figure out why a driver crashed into this strip mall here. You can see the car catching fire. Huge flames there Our Cliff Castle chopper showing that scene near 67th Avenue and Bethany Home Road. Now, the fire department is saying a group of witnesses rushed in to help the driver get out of that burning car. He was rushed to the hospital. We are still waiting to get you details on his condition. Thankfully, nobody else was in the building at the time. The crash, though, it ruptured a gas line and that sparked the fire. Southwest gas had to come in, shut down the gas line, and there were no other injuries. An 18 year old is now charged with manslaughter and aggravated assault, all tied to a crash that claimed the life of a 35 year old mother. Her four year old daughter still recovering in the hospital and Phoenix police say the teenager was going faster than 115 miles an hour when he crashed into another car near 32nd Avenue and Southern on Tuesday night. 603 now the school year is winding down for most students in Arizona. It's hard to believe already there's less than two months until the summer break. But we can tell you this. There's one thing that will not be going away for districts anytime soon, and that would be a bus driver shortage. Our Amelia Fabiano joins us live this morning and Amelia state lawmakers are working on a bill that might help. Yeah, Kaylee, we'll see. So it's Arizona Senate Bill 1630, also dubbed the school transportation bill. And the idea behind it is to allow schools to use different types of vehicles to get children to and from the classroom. So the bill would give more options to these school districts than just the traditional yellow school bus. Schools could use passenger vehicles that can fit 
10 to 15 passengers instead. So much smaller vehicles. That's an option some legislators feel could help significantly in places like rural areas or on tribal lands. Since the pandemic began, districts have struggled, as we said, to find enough school bus drivers. And some districts have even been forced to change routes or at times suspend some service, which of course can throw a big wrench into students' plans, parents' plans. A major driving force here is when someone does get a commercial license, which is what's needed to drive a school bus, you can actually make more money working for a private company rather than a school district. Additional school bus drivers are required to have commercial driver's license, which I think we found out during the pandemic. Those are really high need jobs. And once a person is able to get a commercial driver's license, it's very hard to compete in the marketplace with some of the other freight operators or shipping companies who pay great versus uh, doing that uh, for a traditional school bus driver. So if that passed, excuse me, this bill changes the law to no longer require commercial driver's licenses for those who would operate these smaller vehicles, the school owned ones designed to carry fewer than 16 people. So a concern among lawmakers here is how schools would insure these vehicles, something they'd have to talk to their insurance companies about, of course, and it still has some hurdles in state lawmakers, of course, too. It has to make it through the House and it needs a signature from the governor as well well, Kaylee, so something we'll be keeping a close eye on. And something parents are hoping will work out because this can offer more peace of mind for us, especially so right now. Our Amelia Fabiano on it this morning. We appreciate that. Thank Meantime, you. going in depth on this, is there more districts or will they, there be more districts that could be doing and what they're doing to get more bus drivers behind the wheel? Well, we know a number of schools have been boosting pay and adding benefits to try to get more people to apply, but the Arizona School Boards Association says this is rooted in a much bigger issue, and that will be low funding for education overall, something state lawmakers are not really addressing right now. If you are interested in becoming a school bus driver, the pay and benefits do vary depending on the district, so make sure you are checking your school district's website for openings. There's a new battle at our southern border this morning, and it could lead to even higher prices at the grocery store. The governor of Texas ordering more inspections for trucks coming in from Mexico, causing major backups. Some of the semis even rerouting to Arizona. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi. This morning, the fight over immigration policy between the state of Texas and the White House is intensifying. Governor Greg Abbott recently ordered commercial trucks coming from Mexico to undergo extra inspections, a move that led to major backups at the border, with some truckers waiting 30 hours to enter the U.S. They turned us back around. They sent us back because it is blocked. Truckers protested, setting up blockades like this one in Juarez. And in the process, 18 trucks were burned, apparently by the cartels. Yesterday, Governor Abbott relented. He agreed to ease the inspections at one border crossing. But some of the biggest bottlenecks have been elsewhere. This morning, the White House calls it all a publicity stunt. These actions are impacting people's jobs and the livelihoods of hardworking families in Texas. The new policy in Texas comes in response to the Biden administration lifting Title 42, the Trump era public health order that allowed Border Patrol to turn away illegal migrants to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The CDC is ending Title 42 next month, prompting concern in Texas and other border states about a looming surge of migrants. Governor Abbott already responding by giving migrants free bus rides from Texas to Washington, D.C. The first bus arrived in the Capitol yesterday, and the White House sarcastically thanked Abbott. These are all migrants who have been processed by CBP and are free to travel, so it's nice the state of Texas is helping them get to their final destination. Ike Jaji, ABC News, Washington. Now, Arizona Senator Mark Kelly is part of the bipartisan group of lawmakers pushing a bill to postpone lifting Title 42. Senator Kelly says he wants to see detailed plans from the White House on how they plan to handle the surge of people coming to the border to seek asylum. I think they've come to the realization of what level it will be and that it could be a humanitarian crisis. This isn't good for the migrants. I mean, it really isn't. I mean, folks, we want folks that are coming here and asking for asylum to have a humane process uh, that is not years long. It- 
The senator spending Wednesday visiting the border. He says he wants to see plans for everything from buses to move asylum seekers, places to house them, and more judges hearing asylum cases. Well, just two days ago for small businesses in Phoenix to apply for more COVID-19 relief money. The grants are open to businesses that lost revenue because of the pandemic. There are some eligibility requirements you need to know about. To apply, just head to phoenix.gov. That deadline, it's Friday at 5 p.m. and businesses can get up to $15,000. Up next here on ABC 15 mornings, just a few days left to get your taxes filed. It's all a numbers game by now to keep what you owe low. We are looking at three legal ways to reduce your tax bill. Constantly working on our minds, what we can all do to keep our brains healthy. And call it an inflation surcharge if Amazon doesn't make enough money already, right? The company now slapping some people with a new fee. And let's get you live outside with the ABC 15 live drive out on the roads this morning in the East Valley. This is the Loop 101 southbound price near Warner. Nice smooth sailing, at least in this part of town. We're seeing some slowing in our typical trouble spots. So I'll get you an updated check of your desert drive time still ahead. Well, this morning, another show of support for Ukraine as we cover your Thursday morning headlines here. The presidents of four European countries traveling to Kyiv to meet with President Zelensky there, who had a lengthy phone call with President Biden, where Biden announced a new $800 million aid package for Ukraine. It will include long-range artillery systems, along with more drones and helicopters. Toyota, if you drive one, you need to know. They are recalling thousands of vehicles, all to fix a software problem that can sometimes disable the electronic stability control system. This helps drivers keep control of their car. Yeah, it's a big one. And it does include a number of Toyota and Lexus models from years 2020 to 2022. A new study suggesting learning a second language could help to keep your brain healthy. These researchers looked at the cognitive performance of adults 60 years of age and older, and they found those who are bilingual did perform better on tests. And the experts say switching between two languages really does help to keep the mind constantly working. And after two years of pandemic postponements, the Met Gala is returning to its traditional time slot in May. This year's theme? In America, the Anthology of Fashion and the annual fundraiser for the Metropolitan Museum of Art is known for the extravagant looks celebrities do wear on that red carpet. Every tax season, we all want to pay the least amount possible to Uncle Sam, but could that actually end up costing you more? I'll know this morning, ABC's M. Wynn goes over the do's and don'ts for tax deductions. Nobody enjoys paying taxes. A little padding here or shaving there on your income can be tempting, but cheating on your tax return, experts say just don't do it. You want to make certain all information is reported correctly on a tax return. Why? Because if it's not, the IRS may hit you later on with penalties. Of course, may charge you additional interest. Even in some cases, it could also be a criminal investigation. The IRS has a matching process to check the numbers you input against third party reports. Eventually, the IRS typically catches up to us. So you just don't want to risk it because it's not worth it. There are plenty of legal and legitimate ways to reduce the amount you owe through deductions, tax breaks and tax credits. Some things you don't want to miss out on if you do qualify. There are uh, things like the American Opportunity Tax Credit, the Savers Credit. There are uh, deductions for contributions made towards our dental and medical expenses that are out of pocket. There's an adoption tax credit. There are credits related to obviously charitable deductions, one of my favorites. And remember, you can still make contributions to your individual retirement account until tax day on April 18th. So we know 2021 is behind us, but if you put money into an individual retirement account, you can actually reduce your tax liability. So if you want to save some money for retirement and also get a tax deduction, that's one way that you can go, which is not too late. You still have a little bit more time. M1 ABC News. As we start off with your most accurate forecast, looking outside our Mayo Clinic Valley Cam showing us uh, Camelback Mountain. Not a bad morning for a hike if you do want to head outdoors. Of course, you know Camelback's going to be busy, but plenty of other trails around the valley. And again, it's going to be a good morning to hit those trails. Temperatures are in the 40s and 50s across most of the valley. It is another chilly start to the day, although we're not 
quite as cold as we were at this time yesterday, but we are down to 44 degrees in the Santan Valley. That's one of the cooler spots along with Maricopa where we're at 43 Chandler. You're also waking up to temperatures in the low 40s and we've got upper 40s now in Peoria at 47. Good morning to you in Buckeye. You're checking in at 45 and 51 in Deer Valley. Tempe, you're also checking in at 51 degrees. So as you plan your morning, notice that Phoenix is going to stay in the 50s through about 8 o'clock. Then we start to climb 60s at 9, even 10 o'clock. I think those hikes will be pretty nice even through that 10 o'clock hour 11 o'clock still not too bad lunchtime we're in the mid 70s maybe you're wrapping up your hike by then or going out to grab some lunch if you can find a patio and you've got the time to hang out outside why not mid 70s by then then we start to warm into the 80s as we get into that two o'clock hour and today the 80s are back and our temperatures will end up closer to normal 30 year average you can see it there at the top right of your screen 85 that's the normal for this time of year we'll make it to 84 in Gilbert 83 in Tempe and then tonight those Lows, those numbers in blue down into the 50s by tomorrow morning. So starting off a little milder tomorrow morning for our Friday after a high of 84 in Levine today will cool to 53 overnight upper 70s today for Anthem with a high of 84 today in Litchfield Park. Now across Arizona temperatures are actually running a little warmer than 24 hours ago. You'll notice about a degree difference in Flagstaff that puts us at 20 degrees. So instead of the teens, we're waking up to the 20s. No single digits of the Grand Canyon this morning. Instead, it's 16 degrees there, 34 for Payson and currently 36 in Sholo. And we're going to feel those milder temperatures up north this afternoon too with a high of 76 in Globe, 72 for Sedona and Kingman tops out at 72 with 50s and 60s along the rim. Temperatures will keep trending up. Notice in Flagstaff will be in the low 60s Friday and Saturday. More winds too over the next few days, especially on Saturday. Sholo near 70 by Saturday, low 70s in Prescott by then and we're going to be near 80 in Sedona by Saturday with again those winds getting stronger. Breezes will pick back up here in the valley too by Saturday gusts near 25 to 30 miles an hour. So as you're planning your Easter weekend, know that winds will be a factor Saturday, not too strong, but breezy and temperatures will be warmer by Sunday, a high of 93 degrees. So maybe get those Easter egg hunts done earlier in the morning as opposed to the afternoon. Then we get even warmer next week, upper 90s in the valley by Monday. And for the high country, we're talking highs in the 70s by early next week. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. Coming up on 620 now on your Thursday morning, I'm Megan Thompson watching those current traffic conditions for you. This is the I-17 southbound near 19th Avenue. Here are those southbound lanes. We do see traffic moving along, a little bit of slowing in this area that is pretty typical for this time of the morning. So if this is a part of your commute, here's that Desert Drive Time for you as you're making your way from the stack to the split. That average speed right around 45 miles per hour drive time is getting closer to 10 minutes right now. Just one crash to tell you about on the valley or in the valley rather, but it's off the freeway. It's Indian School Road and 43rd Avenue. Checking your speeds on the I-10. You're looking good in the West Valley. A little bit of slowing as you're making your way to the Loop 101 interchange. And then as you get closer, of course, to the stack and toward the mini stack, those speeds drop. The North Stack looks really good. Taking you to the East Valley as well. No issues on the 60, the 202, the 10. We do have this traffic alert to tell you about though. It's the SR-79 it closed in both directions at mile post 143. This is south of US 60. We don't know when this is going to reopen. That's due to a crash. As we get a check of those desert drive times sponsored by Accident Law Group, I-10 eastbound from the 303 to the mini stack. That's close to 30 minutes, but still in the green on the 17 and the 51. Well, it's 620. The price of higher education. We know it does go up every single year. At 624, we share one option that doesn't include taking out student loans. No more free lunches at 636. Will kids go hungry in a matter of months? A live report on why nutrition experts want to keep a pandemic policy. At 639, it's Phoenix Suns talk around here. How the team is getting ready for the weekend and how you can make a fashion statement for the upcoming playoff run. And at 648, things are really warming up. Iris has that super seven day forecast as they take you live to the ABC 15 live drive out on the loop 202 Santana in the East Valley with that gorgeous sunrise this morning. At 624 Arizona, the cost of going to college, it's not getting any cheaper, but maybe instead of a student loan, you could come up with an income sharing agreement. It's kind of like a student loan where you make payments in exchange for a percentage of your future earnings after you graduate. But consumer advocates 
have a warning that these may come with some unfair terms and costs that you just can't see right now. It's why the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the Department of Education want them to be federally regulated. Classifying it as a loan, you're going to get things like an interest rate agreement. Uh, you're going to get things like an APR disclosure telling you what you're annually going to be paying on that loan. And you'll get things like an amortization table that's going to show you month by month what you can be expected to pay. And along with regulations on income sharing agreements, advocates are also pushing for reducing interest rates on federal student loans. Your next Amazon order may cost more. The company is adding a fuel and inflation surcharge of 5% for sellers who use Amazon to store and ship their items. This starts April 28th. Many sellers are expected to raise prices to cover the added expense. Speaking of prices, as gas prices continue to skyrocket, a lot of people, maybe you, looking into other ways to get around town. This one really gaining popularity. We're talking about the e-scooter. National sales are up 60% from one year ago, and online traffic went up 30% in the weeks right after the initial spike in gas prices. All right, are you looking to have some fun on this Thursday night or Friday Eve? Well, it is bike night at Westgate in Glendale. Hundreds of bikes are going to be lining the entertainment district there. It's fun. Oh, yeah, it looks amazing. And for smart shoppers, the nearby stores and restaurants, they're going to be offering special deals and discounts like 20% off your bill at Johnny Rockets. Doesn't a burger and fries sound good <laughs> yes, right now? Yes, with a shake. Yeah, oh, a shake. Or a root beer float. Oh, I haven't had one of those in a long time. A root beer float. There it is. That's the one. <laughs> Bike night is every Thursday through May 26th. We always just find a way to talk about food. Yes, we always. do. Up next at 630 here on ABC 15 Mornings. This really is an important conversation. Parents don't always have with our kids. Spend less, save more, and be financially responsible. Why more kids need to be set up for success. Allowing you to pay with your hand. How one company wants to make sure you never lose your wallet again. The pandemic brought free universal school lunches, but that is now set to expire. I'll tell you what this means for families.